so people would normally let the rye get big um, and get into anthesis, plant their soybeans into that, and then behind the planter come in and roller crimp that rye. Uh, but again, that puts you into the first, second week of June at that time frame, which can be okay, but generally speaking, you're giving up a little bit of yield on your, on your soybean crop, and that's not something that we were really interested in doing. Uh, we're looking for a solution where we can, if anything, improve on yields. Those two years were kind of a proof of concept on what we can do with the in-row roller and some of the benefits it provides um, to the soybeans, not only from, from uh, eliminating the herbicide pass and, and whatnot, but also some of the plant architecture benefits uh, by having those soybeans shaded early and then taking the shade off and giving them full sunlight, you get a lot of branching which creates more nodes, more nodes creates more beans, more beans creates more revenue for our operation. So that's all good things. Um, so we're learning how to leverage that. And uh, yeah, we saw, that we saw the benefits of it the last two years. And so moving forward, uh, we've got a set of purpose-built, purpose-made uh, Dawn in-row roller units that we're gonna build into a 40-foot roller crimper bar to in-row roll our soybeans. The beans seem to do well by having the rye grow above them early, um, which actually stresses the beans a little bit at the early point in their life. And then when you roll that rye down and give the soybeans full sunlight, uh, we end up getting lots of branching. The, the branching will, uh, from the nodes down low, it'll put on new branches that'll have nodes on themselves and pods on themselves and essentially are a whole nother plant and that will help fill in the gaps of these 30 inch rows. But yeah, using, using the rye is something that I really like. Uh, it makes it so we don't have to spray the beans with a herbicide early. So when these beans are emerging, there's no herbicide out here. Uh, I think actually when I, when I, got, when I pulled up the, the field and the sprayer display, uh, it asked me if I wanted to clear the current coverage map, which would have been from the last time we sprayed, and it said it was 392 days old. So this field had not had a chemical sprayed on it for 392 days before I sprayed it the other day. But yeah, happy with how things are looking so far. Very little weeds as far as actual weeds. Just a few here and there, uh, you know, and then it's just a matter of cleaning up the rye as well, anything that made it past the roller. Okay, so I wanna show you guys this, uh, what, what we're able to do with this rye thatch when we lay it down uh, with, the, with the roller. So you look at the, you look at the bare soil over here. We had, you know, this had this was a cornfield last year, so there's heavy corn residue, but it's getting broke down, uh, eaten up by the biology and the soil and whatnot. And so we're starting to get some, we're starting to get some bare soil uh, exposed to the sun, which is not what we want. We don't want to be seeing our soil really ever. Uh, but this this stuff, you feel it. It's hot. It's hot to the touch. It's dried out. So you got to go. You gotta go pretty deep before you start finding good moisture. I can't even really get it down there without any pliers or anything. But so this is this is hot. You know, this is getting full sunlight. I would say based on what it feels like, I mean that's that's easily over a hundred degrees right now. Probably probably closer to like 110, maybe even 120. It's pretty hot soil. Uh, now you come just 10 inches over and you pull this pull this rye thatch back. And this soil is not even grayed off. You can see it's still it's still brown. Now as soon as we start pulling the thatch back, and the heavier the thatch, the heavier the thatch, the more moisture there is right at the surface. But this soil is cool to the touch. I can put my hand on it and it's cool. So I would say it's probably 80 degrees, somewhere in that ballpark, maybe even less than that hard to say without a, temp, a thermometer but it's cooler and it's got moisture in it see I can clump that together I can I can roll this I can roll this into a clay ball that's right at right at the surface right now and it's been it's 90 degrees today we haven't had hardly any rain down here for like three weeks I think we had four tents down here uh, about well probably four or five days ago by now Saturday morning and today's Wednesday so yeah, that's, that's the power of this thatch. Uh, it, it keeps the water from evaporating 
and it keeps the soil cooler and so this stuff it's not going anywhere it's going to be here for the whole rest of the year and so that's one of the ways that we are able to conserve moisture and have that moisture there uh, come august even if we don't get rain now obviously if we do get rain this is going to do that much better of a job of getting it into the soil infiltrating that rain and then protecting it from from evaporation and whatnot in in the august heat when we're trying to fill grain so you know it's a it's a really good thing to have and it just the stressful part about this is in a dry year like what we've had is it takes moisture to grow this thatch and it always makes you wonder if you're using up the moisture that you need to grow your soybeans in order to grow this thatch but i feel like the benefit of having this thatch is worth the risk of of using some of that moisture early in the season and banking on some rain later on <laughs>